going to be looking at today is some new products. We have the uh, coordinating product release, which has come out. Um, and there's some fantastic products in that. So we're going to be using one of those products today. And also, too, I'm going to show you, and I'll be using a product. I'm not going to show you inside of the new catalogue, but there's a new celebration second release catalogue, which is this one here. So watch out for this. If you want a copy of it, let me know, and I'll get one to you as quickly as possible. But I'm not going to show you inside the catalogue. Don't want to get myself into trouble. So let me just flip this over. So just bear with me one moment and I'll flip the camera. Won't be a second. Okay. Let's hope I've got that all squared up and you can see. So this is the coordinating product release. And a lot of the products that they've uh, brought out coordinate with products from both the mini catalogue and the celebration catalogue so it really stretches your products a little bit further and the one that we're going to be looking at today is actually on the second page here now I have got these up on my Facebook page so if you haven't seen them please um, have a look for it there's some really fantastic products and we're going to be looking at the birthday dies and the birthday dies go with got it underneath here the happy birthday to you stamp set which you will find in your celebration. So if you spend $90, you can get this set for free. Now the dies don't come for free. They're $47 for those dies. So $47, buy a few more extra products on top of that, and you can have this stamp set for free. Now the dies are really great because the dies not only cut out this cake, but there's dies there that will cut out these individual flowers as well. So you can use those flowers for other pro projects. And also it comes with a few other little bits and pieces that it cuts out so you can um, decorate your card with a few extra pieces and also a cake stand. So a lot of fun to be had with that particular die. So have a look for that. And that is well worth the investment to make this stamp set go that little bit further. The other product we're going to be playing with today is actually what's in the second release. And that's these beautiful products here. Now these are just white single-sided designer series paper. But as you can see, that this one has got a print on it and it's in rose gold and silver. Now if I bring that stamp set out, this is what I discovered today. Have a look at this for clever stamping up. That flower is that flower there. They've duplicated these flowers from the Happy Birthday to You stamp set into this designer series paper, which again makes everything coordinate and work together. And this is the beauty of stamping up. They really think forward in what they're doing. Some of the other papers in this pack are you've got this beautiful check here. So it's just a lines to form a check. Let me just find the other one. And there's how many of each one? Three of each, I think, or four. No, just three of each. So that one is in rose gold. And then you have this one in your silver. And the last one is this one, which is just a tiny little flower. Now, all of these can be coloured. So they can be coloured with your blends. They can be coloured, coloured sorry, can't get my words out, with your inks. Um, you can put ray of them. There's lots of things that you could do with these. Um, so they're going to be a lot of fun to work with. So we're actually going to be using this one tonight um, with our card because it does, as I said, it goes with that perfectly. So let me just pop these to one side. Whoops, there's a bit of sticky on the back of my... Okay, let me just throw them down there. So here we are. So here's the card that we're going to be making tonight. So there's that beautiful designer series paper. Now I didn't really want to cover it all up, 
with our um, cake image there so what I've done is I've put a, a little piece of vellum underneath just to break it because the background the designer series paper is actually quite a busy paper but I still wanted to be able to see it but just mute it a little bit so you can see the coordination that it works so well with this particular stamp set so this is the card we're going to make okay so I'm just going to pop that to one side and I'll just show you some of the products we're going to be using along with that we're going to be using the stitched so sweetly dies um, and that is what I cut the vellum out with now I have pre-cut some of this so I don't have to um, do it now uh, but uh, that's the die that goes with it so we've got that and that is about it so let me just get rid of that one as well down there on the floor I'm gonna have fun picking all this up later okay so as I said I've already pre used that sweetly stitched die and that's the largest scalloped rectangle scalloped and stitched and I've cut out that piece of vellum ready to go I've also cut our um, cardstock now the color that I'm using here is let me just check um, I can't quite see the name um, basic gray no the basic gray is too dark it's the sorry folks oh I can see the stamp set no, I can't. It's not grey granite, it's the one the other one. And I've cut that at 21 centimetres by 14 and a half centimetres, and I've scored it at um, 10 and a half centimetres in the middle, so that will just fold nicely. So we're going to fold that in half. And just use our bone folder just to burnish that line so we've got a nice so that's our card base so now we have our card base and we have our piece of vellum then I have our designer series paper now the designer series paper I have cut this at 10 centimeters across by 14 centimeters down and that will just give us a nice little border all the way around our card there now I will post all the measurements and all the names of the colors and everything I used later on on my blog so if you're wanting to see them just pop over to my blog which is butterflies and bow butterflies and bows.com now that's not that's B U T T. E R F L Y S, not the proper spelling of I E S. So butterflies and bows. So we're just going to pop those out of the road as well. So that's all the cutting we need to do. You need to then a piece of scrap of Whisper White, and I'm using my Stamparatus here to stamp this because I just wanted to make sure I got a nice clear image, and I'm using Memento ink because we're going to colour this in using our stamp and blends. So with our Memento ink, I'm just going to ink this up. The stamp apparatus allows me that if I don't get a clear image the first time, I can go back and get another image the second time. So close that up. Push down firmly. Check it. I'm just going to do that one more time just to show you that that will actually stamp back in exactly the same spot. There's lots of other things that you can do with a Stamparatus, but this is one of the beauties of using your Stamparatus. Okay, so I'm going to take this out now. I'm just going to pop a scrap of paper in there just to, that will do, stop the ink from transferring and pop that out of the road. So there's our picture ready to go. Oops. So we'll get rid of our inks because knowing me, if I leave it there, I'll put my fingers straight into it. And the colours in our blends that we're going to be using for the flowers, I am using 
petal pink in both the light and dark and the uh, Rococo Rose in the light. I love these together for our flowers. So I'm going to try to work as quickly as I possibly can to, for this so then you're not just watching me colour in all the time. We're also going to be using Old Olive in both light and dark for our leaves. Pool Party in light and dark for our actual cake. Our cake stand. We're going to be using Smoky Slate and that was the colour of our card base that I couldn't remember. So there we go, Smoky Slate. And then Daffodil Delight for the centres of our flowers. So they're the colours. But I've also got the um, colour lifter on hand just in case I go over the lines and I need to get rid of some colour somewhere. So when I work with my blends, I tend to hold them all together in one hand. Now I'm going to use, there's two different ends to your blends. You've got a thick end and a fine end. So your thick end is like a brush tipped end. And that's really good if you're doing um, very large areas or you're flicking your color. And then you have a fine tip end. Now I'm going to use the fine tip end on this. So I will generally hold my pens like that with all in one hand. It's up to you how you do it. And I'm just going to work in a small area to start with. Because what you want to do is you want to, I always start with my lightest color and then work up to my darkest color. And I'm going to work in a small area and saturate that area with the ink. Now these are alcohol markers, so they are very different to using from our other markers. So I want to saturate that area and that will allow the color to blend when I come to go do my blending. So I'm just going to choose a small area and I'm going to do a couple of, because this is fairly fairly small flower. I'm just going to do a couple of petals and I'm going to go around in a circular motion just saturating that area. Now you, only, you want to work in a small area and you want to work reasonably quickly. Now to give you a good idea of whether you're getting your saturation if you look at the back you can see your colour start bleeding through so always work with some scratch paper on the bottom and you want to keep working that colour through until that colour has gone through your cardstock. And the best cardstock to use is our Whisper White. Okay, so that's coming through nicely now. I'm quite happy with that. So now, actually I started with my dark colour. So I'm going to actually go, normally I would start with my light colour. I'm going to add a little bit of the um, Rococo Rose. Sorry, I wasn't quite looking what I was doing, so I'm just going to add a little bit of that. I'm just adding a little bit of highlights with it. I'm not adding too much, and I'm just going to grab my light one and just blend those colours. So going over the top of the whole lot, and I'm just blending those colours in together. So now I'm going to start colouring in the next section. Now I'm doing it the proper way around. Now I've got my light colour, so I'm going to do all this area here in my light. Take a dark colour, put a little bit of highlight in there. Don't need to colour the whole lot in. You want to leave a little bit of area that's light because you want to have a bit of differential colour, some shading of colour. And then add my Rococo Rose. Just following those lines where you think the shadowing could be. And then again go over it with my light in a circular motion. Just blending those colours out. Because we're working on such a small flower, all I'm really trying to do is just blend the colour out. I'm not trying to get overly fancy with my colouring. So again, just working on that area in my light one. Keep working around. Now one of the reasons why I've used Memento ink to stamp my image is because with me when you're using blends you do want to use Memento ink. If you use your stays on it will bleed and that won't end up for a pretty look. So again just keep working around 
it's fairly quick now these blends you can purchase as um, a pair so the light and dark or you can purchase um, just the one color if you just want to work with just your lights or just your darks but it is advisable to get both of them The other day my old olive is just about out of ink so it was easy just to have to buy one extra pen and not have to buy two when I didn't really need it. Okay so that's our first flower done. So I hope you can see that and we're just going to keep going. Now if everyone is leaving any comments I will come back to you later on and have a look and um, reply to you with any questions that you may have. But I am just going to keep colouring for the time being, just going over those areas well, saturating all that colour in. And I think I've just done the same thing again, gone with my light, my dark instead of my light. Oh well, these things do happen. Talking too much, not concentrating on what I'm doing. Again, just keep working that colour around. You really only want to work on an area, probably no bigger than a 10 cent piece, really. So what I'm doing is just working out where I think shadows might be. I'm not worrying about too much about where sun could be hitting or anything like that I'm also just going to add a little bit of colour to these little buds here. Now if you do go out of the, outside the lines a little bit, the, the lifter will push the colour back in. But we're also going to cut this out with a, a die so it really doesn't matter too much. So we're working on our last flower. I love the Rococo Rose and the, um, what did I say it was, Blushing Bride, no, Petal Pink together. I think they just look so nice together. It's good when you can get your, your favourites and then you just work with those. But it's also good sometimes to go out of your comfort zone and work with something that's a little bit different as well.
So I hope you've all had a lovely day. I hope it hasn't been too wet where you are. Sydney had a big drenching the other day. And um, a couple of my sons were caught out in it in Sydney. But uh, they all survived. Nothing like a bit of rain to freshen up the place. Okay, so that's our flowers done. So let's get rid of those. And then we're just going to do the same thing with the leaves. So again, I'm just going to work in the same spot. Just over and over. Just let, have a look every now and then. See, I'm getting really good saturation there. You probably with these leaves don't need to do too much and get too much saturation because they are quite small and you do have to be careful that if you are laying down lots of color you don't want it to bleed so you'd want to sort of probably work just within inside those lines So I'm starting with my light and then coming in and putting in my dark and then coming back with my light and working over the top just to blend those colours all in. Sometimes these lids are a little bit hard getting off, but that's okay because they're meant to be hard to get off because we don't want the these pens to dry out too quickly. And that's why I never try to leave them just sitting without a lid on it for any great length of time. So I like to hear that snap when the lids go back on. And then all these other little leaves, I'm just going to go over those in the dark. Some more buds there to scrub. Just add that colour there. These little pieces here, I'm just leaving them as white. Just something similar to like a baby's breath type of look. That's my feeling that that could be. So again, I'm going to start with my light and just do the centres. So you can see how quickly you can actually work with these blends. Just add a little bit of the darker colour in there. Okay, so I'm going to start again with my tool party in light and I'm just going to again just work and I'm going to work just around those little flowers there and just go straight through their stems just working in that area there grab the darker one again just working with that finer tip just add some highlights in there would be fairly dark around that part of the cake. Just blend all that in. So again, just working in small circular motions. Yeah. 
you can if you want to like a, a flick it's like a tick it's like you're ticking someone's work to say it's really good and that just allows that allows you sort of get a um a flick motion so the color is actually being flared out a little bit so I'm, but i'm also just going over some of these lines the highlights that stamping up have also given us in the design and now again just going over the top just blending all that color out okay so now we're going to work on the bottom part of our cake now this would make a great cake for if it's going to be for a wedding or for a birthday so now i just want to be careful and get in around all these working quickly in a circular motion I just want to work to that point and again that like a tick like a flick maybe bring that longer on the bottom the shadowing in there One little bit left of the cake. Okay, so now we've just got our cake stand. So again, I'm going to start with my light colour. Whoops, wrong nib. I want to find a nib. I'm just going to colour that in. Bit of dark just on both the outside edges and then just use your lighter one just to, to blend those colors in and then we'll just go down into the actual stand Highlight some of these edges again. Now, if you wanted to, and you want to add a little bit of sheen to the cake, you could get your um, color lifter. And just add a, a little bit of sort of shadowing there now what the color lifter does it actually pushes away the color so where you're coloring in eventually it'll just become lighter in that spot you'll probably see it more when it dries if i'm going to put this, some there i'll put a little bit up here as well 
and you can put a little bit on each one of these and it just pushes the color away okay so that's all done so now what we have to do with that one is cut that out so these are the dies I always keep the plastic bag it comes in and puts all my dies inside it and as I said you've got your die that cuts out the cake also within this these dies you can cut it's not the um, cake stand it's a different cake stand but you've got a cake stand that you can cut out it would look really nice in a gold foil or even a silver foil these are the ones that cut out the flowers so if I've only just wanted the flowers I can cut only just the flowers out and use them elsewhere what else do we have in here you've got a couple of leaves so you can cut out some leaves if you wanted to add a few extra leaves behind your cake and another style of leaf as well so there's lots of bits and pieces in there to play with but today we're just going to use this one which is just going to cut out the outline of our cake so I've just got my big shot sitting over here so I'm just going to line this all up now these dies are really good they fit nice and snugly around the image so we're just going to run that through with the big shot so there's our beautifully cut out cake I probably could have put my die a little bit more over one way but it's still it's cut everything out nicely I'm quite happy with that so now let's put our card together now one thing I did also do on a scrap of um, basic black cardstock I've stamped the word celebrate and I've embossed that with white embossing powder so that's all done all ready to go we just need to trim that so let's grab our pieces for our card now with our original card let me grab it I cut around the words a little bit and I thought this time what I might do is actually cut it out in a rectangle using the fantastic mini trimmer that stamping up that you can get from stamping up when you join um, and become a stamping up demonstrator so I'm just going to use a multi-purpose glue Oh, I've got glue in there, yep. And we're just going to put some of that around. I'm not putting it too close to the edge because I don't want it to ooze over. And I'm going to place that now. We're using the multi purpose glue, it allows you to move this around and get it sitting right in the spot that you want it. Okay. And a little tip if the glue does ooze out, what I always keep handy is a white rubber and I try to keep it, well it's fairly dirty but make sure it's nice and clean so if you can have it nice and clean if any glue does ooze out wait till it dries you'll be able to see where it is because it's slightly shiny because that will stay because it's a multi-purpose glue it stays tacky for a while and then what I do is if it has run out anywhere it's dry I then just take my rubber and very gently go in a circle motion rubbing that area where the glue is and what it does is it balls the glue up into a ball and then you can easily wipe it off so there's a good tip for you is have one of these rubbers handy and it's got to be the nice soft white rubber this one here I think you can pick up from Coles which is um, quite good or most yeah most places but a nice soft one don't get an abrasive rubber you want a soft rubber there are other rubbers that you can purchase out there on the market to do a similar sort of thing I have got another item here I don't know what brand it is anymore it's getting fairly dirty it's not actually a rubber but it's for doing that sort of thing it's got a point on it and it just allows me to go around in a circle to pick up any of that little bits of glue that um, might have popped out but um, this is a good, cheap, economical way of doing it and i found it works very, very well. Okay, so we've got our piece of vellum. Now you've got to be very careful when you attach vellum to your cardstock because any glue that you use will tend to actually come through. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have this sitting on top 
so I know that I can actually put my glue into this area because that's going to cover any glue there now I'm actually positioning this more across to my left hand side than to my right hand side because my cake is sort of going to balance it out by being more to my right so I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue just where I think that that cake is going to sit I'm not going to put too much just enough there so it's just a, a piece there which is about an inch to by half an inch and then position this on the card where I want it to be and that can glue stick down there so you can actually see there you can see the white mark I mean that glue is still wet but you can see where it is so you just got to be very very careful on what adhesives you use to stick it down or having something that's going to go over the top of the adhesive to cover it up so that's going to go there on top so I'm going to get some dimensionals which I have got here somewhere there we go we're going to place some dimensionals on the back of our cake I'm not being too stingy with the number of dimensionals I'm using because I don't really I want this to be secure take our backings off Now this is a really good way of using up some of that beautiful designer series paper and if we use it up that's okay because we can still get more of it and it's good to use it rather than hoard it I'm a big hoarder with paper I'm trying to my hardest lately not to hoard my paper so much and to use it because I think it is beautiful and we do love it but it is good to use it and to share that love what do you reckon okay so there's our cake now we need our word celebrate so I'm going to use my trimmer so put my lid on my glue so that doesn't dry up and I'm going to trim this down now I want to trim it down fairly thin Now another little trick I've got is I'm going to get some post-it note and I'm going to stick that behind there to act a little bit like a handle which is just going to allow me to, to move this about. Make sure I want to go, I want to do it that way. Okay. So line it up, you put the lines underneath to line it up and I'm just going to take it in a fraction. I think I need to clean my trimmer already. I think the other day I might have got a bit of glue on it. Line that up. I just want to make that maybe just a little bit narrower so again I'm just going to pop my just cut the slither off there yep let's grab our card and our word celebrate So I might put that one down there a little bit. I'm just going to use dimensionals again, but I'm not going to take the dimensionals right to the end. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to have this one here. I've got fairly close to the end. That's where my C is. 
and this one is sticking out because that's going to be sitting on top of my cake so what I can do is put a little bit of glue on there probably not much just a little bit there maybe a little bit more glue than what I've put on there but anyway I think you get the idea We may have to be a little bit higher. Whoops, just wanting to stick to my fingers. Okay, so there we have it. Two cards, slightly different in looks, um, with just either cutting around your word or leaving your word in a big block. Just checking, probably could have got that up a little bit straighter, but anyway. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's class. Um, as I said, leave me a comment, I will get back to you and answer you any comments that you have um, I will post this up on my blog uh, hopefully over the next uh, few days or over the weekend so um, go there I'll have all the measurements and everything there that I've used and the photos um, have a great day if you want to purchase anything that we've used today by all means go to my stamping up website which is michelledutrissa.stampingup.net and go to the shop set up your account and go there remember if you purchase $90 worth of products then you can choose something for free so um, the these papers come out I think in the next week or so so but go to my um, Facebook page check it all out there and I will catch up with you all later and hello Patrick my son is watching wonderful and so is my niece so that's lovely lovely to see you all have a lovely day have a lovely evening and i'll catch up with you in a fortnight's time again i'm sorry i will be in canberra next week so um, no facebook live for next week have a nice evening and we'll see you all later bye for now